Catherine Houndar, thank you for joining me. I want to update you about our ambitious Violence Against Women Domestic Abuse and Sexual Violence Strategy, which is published today. I also want to say a few words about the cost of living crisis, which is affecting people across Wales. People are struggling to pay the bills and put food on the table. They're worrying about soaring energy bills and how to make it to their next payday. Last week, inflation rose to 9%, putting even more pressure on pay packets. And petrol prices are increasing yet again, and supermarket bosses have warned that the era of cheap food is over. At my last press conference, I set out a £380 million package of support to help households across Wales. And we will continue to do all we can to help people in Wales. But we need the UK government to act now. It has the power to introduce a windfall tax on energy companies, which would save families hundreds of pounds on their bills. It could increase benefits and reinstate the £20 a week universal credit uplift. UK government ministers tell people to work longer hours, to learn to cook, to buy cheap food, or move to find a better paying job. Instead of action, we get insults. And with every day of delay, people are hurting. I turn now to something which has been the focus of so much work for this and previous Welsh governments, the Violence Against Women, Domestic Abuse and Sexual Violence Strategy. Today we're publishing our latest strategy. We need to have an open and honest discussion about violence against women, and what each and every one of us can do to help end it, to ensure women can live fear free. And we're publishing this latest strategy after sadly witnessing more tra tragic and horrific murders of women. The murders of Seva Erirad and Sabina Nessa at the hands of strangers sent shockwaves through the UK and galvanised a collective effort for us all to face the problem of male violence against women. But these are not isolated incidents. They are at the extreme end of a pattern of behaviour that has conditioned women's lives for far too long. That's why we've committed to making Wales the safest place for women to live fear-free. We want to end violence against women and girls, domestic abuse and sexual violence in Wales. And tackling male violence and misogyny and gender inequality that lie behind it are how we will break the cycle and address the root causes of violence against women, domestic abuse and sexual violence. We must challenge attitudes and change behaviours of those who behave abusively. It's not for women to modify their behaviour, it's for abusers to change theirs. Some may say this ambition cannot be realised, but we must be ambitious. Violence against women is not inevitable. The attitudes and beliefs, the offensive jokey comments, the uncomfortable situations women all too often have to put up with all this must be challenged as these are what perpetuate, excuse and legitimise abuse and violence against women and girls. The femicide censor shows that 110 women were killed by men in 2020, 52% of whom were killed by current or former partners. 70% took place in the home. For some people this will be uncomfortable because it challenges what has been seen as normal for too long. And our plan brings together all parts of Welsh society, working together to challenge and change the norms, behaviours and cultures which affect men as well as women. And this is what lies at the root of achieving our ambitions. Today, I'm setting out six aims for us all. Firstly, to challenge attitudes to violence against women, domestic abuse and sexual violence by raising awareness of its impact and consequences. To increase awareness of the importance of safe, equal and healthy relationships. To hold those who commit abuse to account and help people who carry out abusive or violent behaviour to change. Prioritise early intervention and prevention. Provide training to professionals so they're equipped to give effective, timely and appropriate support to victims and survivors. Provide all victims with equal access to properly resourced high quality support services wherever they live in Wales. And to achieve this, we've created a new ministerially led national partnership board, co-chaired by myself and the lead police and crime commissioner, David Llewellyn, and it met for the first time yesterday. 
the board will make sure we deliver our promises. We will launch a campaign to tackle street harassment. We will develop a common approach for police and other agencies to ensure current legislation is used effectively to crack down on street harassment. We will develop training to promote healthy relationships. But for us all to truly achieve the ambition set out in this strategy, we need an all Wales approach. We need to work together to make our vision of a safer Wales for women a reality. Finally, I want to share with you a true example of working together to achieve ambition. This morning, the Council General and I set out our views on the potential core components of a devolved justice system. Our Delivering Justice for Wales report highlights the increasing development of a distinct Welsh justice policy based on prevention through tackling social challenges and rehabilitation instead of a more punitive approach. And this complements the existing work we're doing with partners under the current system, including the Women's Justice Blueprint and Youth Justice Blueprint. And these will summarise the exciting and transformative work we're delivering with our partners to create a fairer and more rehabilitative justice system for women, children and young people in Wales. On Friday last week, together with the UK Government, we announced the purchase of the site of the first residential women's centre in Wales. And this is an example of cooperative and joint working to deliver vitally important services for women, which improve the lives of women in Wales. It will provide women involved with the criminal justice system with the support and services they need to live healthier, crime-free lives, while keeping them closer to their own communities, allowing, allowing them to maintain crucial family ties, especially with their children. And the Residential Women's Centre will help tackle the causes of low-level offending behaviour, reduce re-offending, and ultimately, ultimately help keep the public safe. So we can be proud of this collaborative approach. It shows what we can achieve when we work together to provide the services people need to change their futures. Ending violence against women will not be easy. But if we take a Team Wales approach, we can and will succeed. Diochen Val, thank you very much. Now, I'll now turn to Ruth, Ruth Masalski, Wales Online. Ruth. Good afternoon, Minister. Can you um, give us an update, please, on Ukrainian refugees and how many have now arrived in Wales through the super sponsor scheme that the Welsh Government has been um, promoting? Well, we have a super sponsor scheme as part of the Homes for Ukraine. It's the UK Government scheme. Uh, we have many more applications than we have actual arrivals. We have actually many who have now uh, been awarded their uh, uh, visas but are waiting to uh, arrive in Wales. I, I will say that we've got our five um, welcome centres that are now fully operational. Um, and of course, what the, the, our super sponsor scheme gives them a route, uh, our Ukrainian refugees, into our welcome centres. Um, it means that the, you know, they have got all of the welcome that will come at, that is already being provided to our welcome centres. Uh, and we continue to encourage people to look at the super sponsor route as a way of ensuring that they're safeguarded, they're supported, and then once, of course, they come to Wales, nation of sanctuary, then we can help them move and integrate and settle uh, and, uh, and take their place um, as they will do in contributing um, in Wales and in our society. And of course, children going to school and support for English language classes, but so many who are coming are actually also uh, you know, really skilled and, and ready to to work, support, and support their families and play a part in the community. If I can push on, on have we got any exact numbers on that or if we can get them afterwards if, if they're not available? And then my second question is about, um, in, under the previous scheme for Afghani refugees, can you tell us how many of those are still um, waiting for permanent homes? People who came to hotels and welcome centres and such things. Well, we certainly know um, that uh, we have 700 Afghan uh, refugees coming in the evacuation from last August, um, but very much the same sort of approach. We had our welcome centres, as you know, and and many of them now have moved to all parts of Wales. There are still some um, who are waiting in the short stay before uh, accommodation before they move on. Of course, this is something which you know, like uh, what we're doing with the Homes for Ukraine, our super sponsor scheme, 
ultimately all local authorities in Wales are playing their part. It's not just the dispersal areas that are in, in the South Wales and South Wales and uh, and North Wales, it's all local authorities playing their part, not just as they did with the Syrian refugee displacement scheme, but also um, with the Afghan refugees as well. So um, this is our responsibility as a nation of sanctuary and all local authorities um, playing their part, again, back to, to Team Wales. And we will share, of course, the very latest, I think the very latest statistics in terms of of um, those arriving through Super Sponsor and Homes for Ukraine are publicly available on uh, our website. And of course, we get that update now from the UK government um, on a local authority, local authority by local authority basis, and they're updated every Thursday. Thank you very much, Ruth. Can I go to um, Felicity Evans, BBC Wales? Hello, Minister, thank you. We've seen successive strategies from various Welsh Labour governments over the course of devolution to try to tackle the problem of violence against women, many of them using very similar language to the language you've just been using about this new strategy. What is it about this one that'll make the difference that others haven't? Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's a really important question, Felicity, because... Uh, we're absolutely determined that this next phase, I mean, it's, the, it's you know, five years on from our pioneering groundbreaking legislation, the Violence Against Women, Domestic Abuse and Sexual Violence Act. Uh, we had a duty then to produce a national strategy. Five years on, this is our refreshed and extended strategy. We've called it a blueprint strategy. This actually means that we're doing things differently to hold everyone to account who's got responsibility. And crucially for that, that involves policing. So that's why um, we're bringing together in an implementation board um, both the policing in Wales um, and also obviously Welsh Government and all our partners who play their part to deliver. So it's a blueprint uh, strategy to bring every, hold everyone to account to, to deliver change. But of course, there's been much good work already been done. The, the money, that the support we give to our specialist services, our women's aid groups, BAUZO, uh, but, you know, all of them, again, 8 million actually in the budget for next year. Those specialist services, our national advisors, our 24-7 Live Fear Free helpline, and, and crucially, the training that we do in terms of don't be a bystander, and ask an act reaching out to 245,000 people. We, some of it is ongoing, but it is so embedded. And one of the key things, I think, Felicity, is that we're looking at you know, those, those issues that we need to address, such as um, uh, education and awareness. Uh, and that's going to come through our new curriculum, particularly with the new strand on healthy, relations, healthy relationships which I think will be uh, crucial. It's got to be early intervention, a public health approach as well. But I think we've been quite tough in this statement today. This is actually about ending violence, a male violence against women. Men can play their part. I've got my white ribbon badge on today, and we have you know, men in our Senate like Jack Sargent always leading, uh, speaking up. But it actually has to end... We, we looked at now, extending, of course, not just from the home, but to um, street harassment and workplace harassment. I, I, I could go on, Felicity, because there are so many aspects of this new strategy. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that, Minister. And uh, on, a, on a different topic, do you believe that Welsh schools are safe places for black children? Well, I mean, uh, we're so shocked by what has happened to uh, Raheem Bailey. So shocked. And as the uh, Jeremy Miles, our Minister for Education, has said in a statement he made yesterday, I mean, th this is where we have to condemn bullying and racial has harassment in any form. Uh, and it has to be, uh, it has to start in education, doesn't it? It has to start in our schools. And I think Jeremy th said this morning, tackling racism and bullying head-on in our schools and taking a very robust approach. So uh, this is where, in two weeks' time, I will be launching our anti-racist action plan, and we need that action plan, because that action plan is what is now going to help address this matter. It should, every school in Wales should be a safe place for all our children, and we must now think to uh, think of the family think of Rahim um, and 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 his family 
uh, look at, again, uh, the bullying in schools, the guidance, which, of course, the education minister is looking at. Obviously, learn what happened. That's crucial in terms of the local authority and Gwent Police finding out what happened, supporting the family. Uh, but actually, every we, we do not want to be in the anywhere in the place where we see this these kinds of incidents happening. Thank you, Felicity. Can I move on now to Gwen Ann Campbell, ITV Wales? Good afternoon. Um, the Me Too movement was back in 2017. Why is it taking us five years to get to this point, and why isn't this strategy already in place? Well, of course, Gwen Ann, we do have we have had a strategy in place over the last five years. It was part of the uh, got quite clear legislative uh, basis of uh, our, our Violence Against Women, Domestic Abuse and Sexual Violence Act that we had to have a national strategy uh, and, and it had to be a national strategy that all public bodies would subscribe to, that we would be supporting specialist services and we have had five years, as I've said, of, of working, providing those specialist services, early intervention. Um, I've just come from a meeting um, which was a particularly looking a, at the situation facing migrant women coming out, all over the world who face um, domestic abuse and sexual violence. And um, a, a professor from Birmingham was saying, you've got everything in place in Wales because you want to make Wales the safest place for women. Um, and you want this to be a, a strategy that actually is going to make a real difference. So, you know, it's actually build, learning the lessons from what we've done, building on it, get, engaging all partners, but specifically with this next stage, um, not only are we involving the police much more clearly, those non-devolved bodies, so yes, not we're not responsible for policing, although we'd like to be, but we're working with policing to make sure that we can deliver on this. But also we're extending our strategy from not just domestic violence, violence in the home, and I've given the statistics about the, you know, and, and sadly the endemic violence still we see in the home, but also to that wider culture of violence in the street, the workplace, um, as a result of the horrific murders that we saw uh, last week, uh, last year. So we are now moving into the next stage, if you like, of this strategy, and we have got everything in place to make this a uh, strategy which will deliver that kind of, of change. Thank you, Gwen Ann. Thank you. Um, and just another question then. Can I also get your reaction to the latest Partygate photos, please? Um, what should happen next? Should the Prime Minister resign? Well, I think, you know, when we saw the pictures of him with his glass of wine, uh, last night, he just, it, uh, people will just just reacted with disbelief. How is he getting away with this? And I think you know clearly we are we. There are calls on the on the Metropolitan Police. You know why why hasn't he had a fine? When we hear others, a party that he denied was happening. Um, you know we went saw saw that as well. So it, it's again we go through this circus about party gate. What a party isn't a party, but actually. What are the issues today that people are facing? They're facing a horrendous cost of living crisis. He's getting away with that. And what we have to focus on uh, is, protecting, uh, is uh, protecting the people who are suffering uh, from the cost of living crisis, which we as a Welsh government are putting at the absolute forefront. Uh, you know, only last week holding a, a round table about tackling food poverty, meeting with energy providers later in this week. So clearly, the Prime Minister's got to consider his position. Thank you very much. Can I move on to Harry Hansen, That's TV. Thank you. Good afternoon, Minister. Um, I was wondering if you could update me on the £10 million residential women's centre, which is set to open in Swansea in 2024, of course, designed to lower the number of local female offenders being sent to prison. How does this fit into the strategy that you've spoken about today? Well, it's very key to the strategy. Um, it's, I mean, I think this just shows how we need to work to tackle violence against women and domestic abuse by looking at um, all, of the, all of the partners, and that's the Ministry of Justice we've been working in, with in terms of the UK government and this new residential women's centre, looking at the role of the police, but looking at, this is particularly looking to support women in, who find themselves caught up in the women's residential, in, in criminal justice. So we have a female offending um, blueprint, which is again, is about how we can 
help women in terms of um, supporting them so that they can live healthier, crime-free lives and not have to go to prison. I mean, I, I've been horrified when I've visited women in prison outside of Wales, and we don't want a women's prison in Wales ever. We want this kind of women's residential centre, which is actually a pilot as an alternative to prison, and it's going to help um, tackle the causes of low-level offending that, uh, that women may be caught up with. But can I just make the point about connecting it with the uh, with the, 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 the situation that you raise is that a large percentage of the of the women who go who end up in the criminal justice system I think actually have experienced domestic violence over 50 percent and also many women have also experienced sexual harassment so those factors are crucial and they make the connection with our new strategy uh, but also I'm delighted that we are piloting this in Wales. Um, and this is a real breakthrough and it can really show how we can support women who get caught up in the criminal justice system in this way. Thank you, Minister. And, you know, you mentioned that ending violence against women and girls rests with all sectors of society. So I wanted to ask you about schools. Do you think that a big part of, you know, ending this is, is does lie with schools? And would the government be willing to offer more support to schools to kind of up the education on violence against women and girls? That, well, that's a really helpful question because that's a key part of our new strategy. It's, it's about actually educating everyone. It's not just children. I mean, it's educating the whole of society. We need cultural change. This is about society uh, acknowledging, you know, what is a civilised society? It's not one where women have to, you know, face fear um, either home in the street or the workplace. So, um, but schools are, cr are crucial. And I, d I do believe, you know, in terms of our new curriculum and the ways in which you can uh, intervene early, early into children's lives and families' lives, we can help address this. There's a, you know, there's a strand of the curriculum which is about healthy relationships. Now, you know, that's what we need to imbue into our children. Um, that concept, that understanding of what healthy and fair and equal relationships mean. Thank you very much. Thank you.